What were some of the challenges that you found in renovating an older building to come up with something so modern? So it's an interesting building. This was never purpose-built to be an academic building. It was a brewery warehouse. And uh, if you ask our president, what he will say to you is, the one lesson he learned from this is never try to make a gallery out of a brewery warehouse. So you can take that away with you. Um, it is a building that has been uh, very beloved by the image arts faculty and students over the years, had terrific studio spaces and other spaces that met their needs, but it needed more. Um, and we also had, with the uh, Black Star Collection, the ability to create a world-class gallery. So we were really trying to do two things with this building. And uh, ultimately, the challenge was the challenge of any renovation that anyone's found when they've done their kitchen or their den, that uh, grafting new onto old makes things complicated. But I think what you end up with is something extraordinary. And that is really what you have in this building, as you move from the new light-filled, glass-filled areas the image center uh, that has an extraordinary gallery space into through the old building you really feel the seamless integration of old and new and I think ultimately it's very successful. It also has some pretty complex lighting that you can uh, see from the outside from the street level. How challenging was that part of the project? Well it's interesting technology. Uh, it's extraordinary lighting that uh, uses computer technology to program so the number of colors that can be achieved through it and the kinds of patterns are really quite uh, quite amazing. The challenge then is now you have the technology, you have the ability to do all this, what exactly are you going to do with it? Um, who will program it? What is it expected to do? Is it an artistic creation to be um, you know, used by artists for purposes of gallery exhibits? Is it a community engagement feature to allow us to celebrate events on campus? So there's a lot to be thought through to make sure we are making the best use of it and uh, happily we have a wonderful team of people doing that work right now. What features have you added to this building? Well, there's a lot that's very visible from the outside. The transparency, the glass, the illumination, all of which are extraordinary aesthetic features of the building. But there are things in the heart of the building that are at least as important. Uh, for the first time, this building will be accessible to everybody, regardless of how they enter it. Before, if you were in a mobility device, you had to go around the back entrance and through the freight elevator. Uh, there were uh, barely any women's washrooms in the old building. Now the washrooms are there and they're accessible as well. So really the building has become much more open to our entire community, a kind of building with which, of which we can be tremendously proud. And those changes, uh, there are sustainability elements within the building as well. All of those things are not necessarily visible at first glance, but they make a huge impact on the university. What kind of feedback do you get on this building? Because it's it's very visible right now. It's no there's no hoarding on it, and people can go in and out of the building. What what are people saying to you about it? I think people are really uh, astonished by how beautiful it is and the impact it's made on the heart of the campus, right at the corner of uh, Victoria and Gould Street, uh, sitting at Lake Devo, uh, with the new Balzac's Cafe opening out onto Gould Street that's now pedestrianized. It has really become a central feature of campus. It's almost a magnet to the entire community. And uh, we know that students are loving the study space within it. In fact, there's, if anything, a bit too much competition among students to get into those spaces because they are so light-filled and transparent and comfortable and, and really uh, perfect for the kind of uh, studying our students want to do. So the feedback really is terrific. It seems like a gathering place for the campus as well. It really has become a community builder. Uh, it's, uh, it has really made a difference to that sense of there being a campus. One challenge of an urban university is that you are somewhat decentralized and what is that place where people say, okay, I'm here, I'm at Ryerson. And there's no question with this building, it's visibility and the, the lighting is certainly part of that, the cafe is part of that. All of that has created that sense of a hub, a heart, the nexus, the place where people gather. And to the city, the, the wider audience, mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean to the city? Well, we feel that this is absolutely part of Toronto's cultural renaissance. If you think about the rejuvenation of the ROM and the crystal, you think of the AGO, uh, this is another piece of that fabric of Toronto. And it will be drawing uh, Torontonians and tourists alike into our part of the city, really building that part of the city as another place to see extraordinary art, extraordinary artworks. So we really think it's a, a tremendous gift to the city and uh, we're very excited to see the impact it's going to have. Julia, thank you very much. Thank you.